It's a beautiful day on the Mukarau River in Mozambique. I'm here for a 10 day hunting adventure with my good friend Gavin Ingram of Nduna Hunting Safaris. We've teamed up with renowned dangerous game hunter JP Kleinand at his Mahimba camp deep in the Mozambique bush and he's taking us out on the river looking for crocodiles. However, it's not me doing the hunting today. I'm just here for backup as Gavin has decided that he wants to add crocodile to his list of hunting achievements. Plus, they're really tasty. Crocs are a huge problem in this river as the locals depend on this waterway for travel, fishing and drinking water. Even a small croc can take out a villager with ease. Because of that, they're incredibly dangerous. We head up on the river as the tide begins to drop, as it's now that the crocodiles begin to lay out on the mud banks, basking in the hot African sunshine. This river is full of some absolute monster crocs, and Gavin can pretty much have his pick of a very fine bunch. Being the proud hunter that he is, Gavin wants to find the right croc, a big boy, a monster even. He scans the bank very carefully indeed. About halfway up the river, Gavin spots a good sized croc lazing away on the riverbank and sets his sights on him. We pull the boat over quietly to the opposite bank and Gavin wriggles into a shooting position. JP checks the range for him and Gavin is good to go. The croc senses danger and turns to head towards the water. He thinks about sliding into the river and making a swift exit. But fortunately for us, he rethinks and stays put on the riverbank. Luckily for us, he's now in an even better position for Gavin to take his shot. I slide in alongside Gavin and set my own crosshairs on the croc too. It's vitally important to make sure that you have a second shooter lined up, just in case the first shot doesn't take him out and he tries to slide into the water. Shooting from a boat bobbing up and down the river is incredibly difficult. Even the smallest of movements in the water or on the boat can make it difficult to hold your aim. Gavin waits patiently for his shot and when ready, he fires. Immediately I fire too. His tail wriggles and mouth opens, but he stays put. It's perfectly normal for the clock to react in this way, even to a great shot, as the nerves twitch and the body reacts to the trauma. But you absolutely must make sure he isn't going to slide into the river, fatally wounded. Gavin puts one final shot into the croc for insurance and he stops dead in his tracks. Gavin is delighted when we celebrate his success. JP is especially happy with the quality of our shooting under such difficult circumstances. Gavin's elation is also very evident. You come out there to absolute wild Africa where there's such uh, high volumes of crops and uh, to get the big ones like this, you know, it's just something uh, awesome and to do it with a mate of mine. No, well, it was very impressive shooting there considering we're a rickety boat yeah. and this river is going out pretty fast. Your shooting was good and solid. I didn't need to back you up really, but... You know what, we, we don't want to be in this position as with Jeff was, you know, you rather come in, have the insurance shots yeah, yeah. and uh, you bag your trophy and uh, we can have good beers tonight. Okay, well, let's go and see what we found then. Good shooting, brother. Thank you. Well, I don't know. We quietly float across the river to secure Gavin's trophy. I can feel the pride bursting from my friend and fellow hunter. Unfortunately, this croc isn't quite the monster or beast Gavin had anticipated, but he's still incredibly proud of his achievement as he examines the entry wounds and reflects on the hunt. Now, one thing in that I don't think everyone realizes, and it's always not the nicest thing to think about, is that, you know, if you want to kill something like that and bag it, you don't want to take chances. No, no. You know, you'd rather put the insurance shots in there, and, you know, it's always a pleasure to make sure that it's properly dead. Mm -hmm. Well, I can certainly say, Gavin, uh, that crocodile is properly dead. <laughs> it's not semi-dead, it's not half-dead. Yo, look at that one. With a little help from JP's guys, the mouth of the croc is tied as a safety measure and he slid into the boat with relative ease. We head on back down the river as Gavin is eager to get his croc hung up and measured so he can really evaluate his quarry. As the sun fades in the African sky, the guys pull a croc off the boat and load him into the truck, ready for the journey back to camp. When we get him hung up for examination, it's clear he isn't the biggest monster in the river, but Gavin has still taken a pretty dangerous animal out of action, 
in tough shooting conditions. Plus, the whole camp is looking forward to the tender and tasty crock meat. So Gavin, we've uh, finally managed to get your, your crock back uh, from the river. So tell me about the hunt, how exciting was it for you? And it was really a thrilling hunt for me, you know, uh, just the pure fact that we uh, um, had to shoot it from the boat and not uh, go through the, the, you know, the bush and the savannas and go around uh, and that um, conditions was good. I mean, the water was stable, boat was stable, but I mean, there was a lot of stuff that uh, we had to take in consideration uh, you know, with uh, five, six people on the boat. Everyone was real well, quiet. I, I was rocking a little bit yeah. myself. <laughs> you know, it was my... Yeah, but, but, but still in the end, uh, you know, what we, we had good shots. Um, I mean, uh, the first shot definitely, you know, I, I reckon it took it out, you know, it had that quick uh, wag of the, the, the tail, which indicates that it's dead. But I mean, you just don't want to take a chance with no. um, with an animal like this. And You can only kill it uh, once, but you've got to make sure it goes down straight ab away. Absolutely. No, we did, and I, I'm sure the guys will see from the replay. The most important thing for me, or the most interesting thing, uh, yeah. should I say, was seeing how closely the locals live with the crocs. At one point we saw a croc actually right next to a boat yeah, ramp. No, it's crazy. I mean, these, uh, I mean, that's why they get killed, uh, you know, next to these rivers. Uh, they're right next to the river. Mm. Uh, and I mean, the Two trackers and nine locals in the past eight years, which is, yeah. that's quite a lot of people. Yeah. I mean, even if you look at the, the, the boats that they're using, I mean, it's a half log, uh, you know, which is carved out. I mean, what protection could that give you, you know, if, if I mean, something like this come for your Oipa? Luckily, Gavin, the big white croc hunter, turns up and shoots this. And in, you know, quite interesting is these are the size that would yeah. kill. Well, look at these would, teeth on here, yeah. That, that would kill people. You these know, are much, much sharper than the ones. And yeah. they're, they're fast, more agile in the water, yeah. a lot more dangerous. Yeah. And uh, well, this one's not very, very dangerous anymore, but uh, no. So congratulations on another great hunt, man. No, what a lovely day. And, yeah. Thanks for sharing it with me. Yeah. <laughs> To create your African hunting adventure of a lifetime, visit andunahuntingsafaris.co.za. Subscribe to Team Wild TV to see what else we managed to harvest on our epic safari in Mozambique, as well as the best hunting, air gun, gear and bow hunting videos on YouTube.